one cool a cool factor about living out there is just who you can possibly bump into as far as someone that may strike up conversation for whatever, especially if you're in the sim- a similar field art wise or whatever the case may be. And who, I mean, who you can possibly network with. I don't even mean like a list. I just mean just anybody in general. Yeah. Yeah. Out here in LA, there's so many, obviously it's people are making movies. So yeah, there's, there's so much going on like every day. It's pretty cool. See, I like that. I like that. I do. I do have an intro for us. So I'll okay. drop it and then we can dive into this. Okay, great. We'll be right back, people. We'll be right back. That was not it. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick, but nice. Like, where in the world is the... I just did it. Hang on. Let me see where I saved it. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> this happens. Oh, I know where I save it. I saved it in the intro folder. Give it a minute to load, and we got sure. it, guys. Oh, man. <laughs> All good. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I do this stuff quite often. Mm-hmm. I've been potting for five years, but hey, people. This is professionalism at its best. Yeah. Very but... I will say this, John. This movie here, I'm just like, <laughs> these people are nuts. <laughs> <laughs> these people are great. Like, what? Oh my goodness! Just, just wait till you hear about it, people. It's, <laughs> and it's something I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend. And the intro is ready right now. Okay. It's your boy, Sir Sturdy. I already know what you're thinking. Random episode on a Saturday. Yes, yes, yes. And this is going to be an awesome one. I got my brother John on here with me. We're going to be reviewing this right here, Crimes of the Future, and talking about his Kickstarter right here. Oh, stay for the show. Because as soon as I shut the fuck up, we're going to start talking. Welcome to the madness. Welcome to the madness. All right. Just got to put the energy in it, you know? Yeah, that was great. That was awesome. So I guess we can dive into this crimes of the future. So have you, have you watched this movie a lot? Like, was it a one-time watch or I bought the DV, the Blu-ray. I watched it once and bought the Blu-ray, but I didn't have a chance to watch it a second time. Um, but I have been following David Cronenberg's films. You know, his, all of his stuff is pretty uh, challenging to the audience to say the least. Um so I was kind of curious about this one. And I, the funny thing is, I heard, I was watching an interview with him recently that he got eye surgery or something. So he sees much better now than ever, um, cataract or something. Mm-hmm. So this is definitely his best looking film. I'm not sure if it was part of the, the surgery because he could see better. But it's a beautiful film. And it's amazing how much uh, beauty they put into it and in funding for such a bizarre movie that very few people would be able to sit through, you know? So I think it's good that people are still challenging the audiences. I mean, I was challenged. I was like, dude, this is like messed up. <laughs> but, uh, but, um, but that's, what's great. Cause there's so much, con- so much conservative thinking going on and censorship and mm-hmm. everything is getting more and more touchy. And then you have these people slipping under the cracks to this crazy stuff. You do. So, yeah, I think that's great. You know what it kind of it made me think of a little bit, not necessarily to the strangeness of this film, but just how it was like this. Because it seems like it's just this town that everybody's just cool with what's going on. Is um, so Have you ever seen Society? I haven't seen Society. I write that one down. That film right there, I don't want to spoil anything for you. Write down society and just write down the word shunting. And you'll just be you're never gonna forget what that is. <laughs> that that movie there though, just just how out there and how crazy it was, and how people were just like in the movie, how they're so comfortable with this. Like once you see what's going on and once you dive deeper into it, kind of like how this one is. And just how normal they make it seem in the movie like that they're they're all right people they're, they're like cutting their faces they're doing all these crazy body more more, more what is the word i'm looking for they're doing some crazy body stuff they're <laughs> they're, 
they're tattooing their their organs. Ugh. And just there was a kid eating plastic, eating a garbage can. And I, when I'm first looking at this, seeing that little boy sitting in the bathroom eating the garbage, I'm like, is he really eating a trash can? I'm like maybe I looked at looked at this wrong. <laughs> and when the camera you know goes to the other angle and it brings it right up, I'm like, no, he's eating a trash can. What, what's going on with this? Mm. Yeah, supposedly there's uh, some science that being developed that we can actually eat plastic to survive. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, um, and we actually we do eat quite a bit of plastic anyway with all the junkets in the oceans and stuff like that. So he's kind of taking it to this other very, um, I don't know what the word is, but uh, creepy direction, you know, with how far we can go with, with all this stuff, you know. Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty crazy. And he never judges uh, the film or the story. It just kind of just lays it out. Here it is. Um, he did another film called Crash. Have you seen Crash? I have not, but I will write that. Crash down. is equally disturbing. It, they were trying to stop this movie from even being released, but um, it's uh, people that get off on car crashes. Oh. <laughs> they crash their car, then have sex. <laughs> Like, I mean, it's so that this was basically the same freaking thing, the same freaking thing, except they were like they ended up making the surgery sex in some way, which I'm just like, like I remember, there was a line from the movie where the guy said, "I don't think I'm good at the old or I'm not good at the old sex anymore," and I'm just like, mm. "How is this better? How is this <laughs> you get a tube stuck in your side and then." Uh. You're in front of whoever your partner is, and they're basically doing the same thing, getting the tube stuck. How is that better? If, so... if, if put it this way, people, if that was sex, none of us would be here right now. <laughs> <laughs> none of us would be here right now because nobody's nobody in their right minds gonna want it. Like, wait, wait, I have to do this to have kids or just to have forget it. <laughs> yeah, right. It's crazy. And yeah, the way it feels somewhat normal is uh so he puts you in this very uncomfortable place and then leaves you there for two hours. And you're like, you, you leave kind of like weak in the knees, you know? Mm -hmm. So he, he did another film called Videodrome. And uh, for some reason, every time I watch Videodrome, I always fell asleep like halfway through. <laughs> and then I would wake up thinking I'm in Videodrome. Like I couldn't, I couldn't tell if I was in reality or actually in the movie. Which oh, was even awesome. freakier. Um, and then finally, I think one day I, I turned the movie, I played the movie while I was doing my taxes or something to keep me awake. And I was able to watch the entire film from start to finish. But it's, I'm not sure, I didn't fall asleep because it was boring as much as it was so hypnotic that it kind of put me into this weird trance. And I would just kind of gently fall asleep. And then I'd wake up not knowing where the heck I am. It's very bizarre. That's interesting right there. That's yeah. Interesting right there. Yeah. I, I I do like those kind of movies that are just like that weird, just really mess with your mind and just make you kind of think and sit back like, what in the hell is going on? What am I watching? It's it's almost like one of those things where it's it's like, why am I watching this? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> not because there's it's something bad. wrong with me for watching it, this. <laughs> exactly. But not but not yeah. necessarily because it's a bad movie. Like it's interesting. But it's just the strangest shit in the world. I'm like, why the hell am I watching this? I have to know what goes on. Like, I can't turn it off right now. Like, with this, this is one of those movies. Like, if you turn it off, say in the middle, you're gonna be like, okay, well, why are they doing this? Which I still don't know why. But that's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, why are they doing this? What else is gonna happen? How far is this gonna go? And you just have to finish it. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad. I mean, I'm happy I watched this movie, and I'll, I'll probably have to give it another. This is a, another one of those ones where you probably have to watch it maybe two or three times to catch everything and really kind of, exactly. you may never understand it, but you may see a few things and it's like, oh, okay. I mean, I see here. I still don't understand why they're doing it, but I see what's going on now. And well, yeah, it was also um, a director who's been doing these films for many, many years. And I heard he got, he got offered to do films that he just turned down. He got offered to do Return of the Jedi. Wow. <laughs> and said no i'm gonna do my own weird things and so That's... you know imagine a, an indie filmmaker most indie filmmakers would would just jump ship as soon as someone offered them mm -hmm. a certain amount of money but he um is very fixated on his own 
I don't know what his own things that he's trying to express that all the money in the world couldn't pull him away from his independent path. And he's done lots of films, but he doesn't, I'm sure he can't raise the money as easily as uh, a more commercial director, you know? So I get that. I respect that though. Cause it's like, he's more so like, I'm doing this because I love it. Like, yes, of course you want the money, but it's like, I'm doing this. This is my art. This is my style. This is how I want to do it. Crazy turning on that star Wars bag. I'm not going to lie to you. Brave, crazy, very respectful. I couldn't do that. I would, <laughs> I'll, I'll do this movie, then I'll go back to my solo stuff, what I enjoy doing, because this money right here can help my other projects and get me seen a little bit more and heard a little bit more. Where people feel like, oh, he did this too? Okay. But again, I respect what he did because that's <laughs> pretty that's wild. Crazy. That's crazy. Just because of how huge that movie is, still, or how huge that property is star wars and to this day still and still growing yeah absolutely um another one of my favorite directors is uh, david lynch and he does some very indie low budget lower lower budget types type projects and very strange and he was also offered for some reason return of the jedi he turned it down so it's like um you know, sticking to your own path, there, there's something of value to that, I think, in a strange way. So um, I've tried to pattern that as much as I could myself, which, you know, trying to, st not trying, but just going to do my own thing, not even trying, but, you know, um, where I may have been offered to do other things or get involved in certain studios or whatever. And I was just like, no, I'm, I'm going to do my own thing, you know. Um, there is something to be said about doing what you really enjoy as opposed to just getting paid to um, work on other people's projects, I guess, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, from my standpoint, I've never got to do anything like that, but I, I get it, though. It'd be like someone taking over my show in a sense or like, hey, come on this show because we love your energy, but you have to do this, 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 this. Yes, you're going to get paid for it, but you have to do it this way. Like kind of, we like your energy though. Keep your energy, but do it. No, you keep that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It, it kind of, um, you know, it takes something out of your soul. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. I mean, if you have the time and, and, and everything and the resources to do both, because you want to, it's like, okay, I do want to get, this will help with money or whatever the case may be for whatever it is. Right. I, you got to hustle. Yeah. I, but it's like at the same time, you I get you also want to go back to your art, your passion, because once I feel I mean, again, this is to a higher end of things. But I feel like once you get to that part to where it's like, OK, I'm doing this just because it, it pays the bills, then it's just like even though it's in the. The job you like or the, the workforce you love, but you're still not doing what you want, you're doing what they want you to do because you're good at what you do versus, OK, you know what? I'm just going to stick with the indie route or whatever and keep my projects how I want them. Keep my style how I want it. And I mean, I, that's just great. That's yeah, great. totally. Yeah, I have this philosophy, good money, bad money, you know. Um, and there is, I think there is a difference, you know, when people pay you to do something you don't want to do, I think it's bad money. And when people pay you to do something you do want to do, it's good money. So if you go to like a convention and someone buys a little toy that you made for five dollars it, it feels so much more meaningful mm -hmm. than a big studio paying you to do what they want you to do for five hundred dollars it just feels it feels better you're like oh wow you really want my little thing it does so, it, yeah. it really does and like for me what i'll do at speaking of conventions is i'll go when i'll buy like uh you know like indie movies and i'll ask the people to sign them and there's like real i'm like this is your work of course, I want you to sign the DVD or the Blu-ray or whatever, whatever I get, because you created this. You may, yes, please sign this. <laughs> and like with the first few times I was saying that and they, pe some people would be shocked. I never understand that. I never get it because I'm just like, you should be proud of this. I don't care if you're in the movie for 30 seconds, you're in it. Sign it. You did it. Yeah. It. A lot of times they haven't been asked that question. It's, it kind of encourages them like, wow, someone really cares enough to ask for my autograph, you know, so that's that's fantastic. You, I'm because I'm telling you guys right now, if I'm ever connected with movies and like say they're like, okay, Aaron, we want you to distribute these out, whatever, I'm signing every single Blu ray if you want to, if you want me to or not. I'm signing every, everybody's getting the autograph, it won't be my real name, it'll be the search 30 signature. <laughs> I don't want anybody trying to steal anything. 
<laughs> right. So that's great. I think that's awesome. You know, um, and uh, you know, speaking of movies nowadays, with the the quality of the cell phone, you know, you could create a high quality movie just shooting it with your cell phone nowadays. You don't need a fancy. Ca- I mean, the fa- the phones are pretty fancy, but once you have that, shoot it, edit it. You know, yeah. get it out there, get some feedback. Then the next one you make a little bigger or a little smaller, but it's very easy to make a movie. I always say it's as easy as falling out of bed. Making a good movie under the hands is really hard. <laughs> I fought but, but you, a lot of times, John, and that's easy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you make them and you get feedback, you know. So whenever mm-hmm. I do something, I'll have screenings and I'll have people give me feedback at the end. I write down every single note. And then the next screening, things get a little better, you know, and better from there. Um, also, you get to find your own voice when you go out there shooting, you know. So, mm-hmm. and if you have, let's say you really love horror films, then all those horror films that you've seen are in the back of your mind as you shoot your, you yes. know, what I mean, your thing. So, that's true. Something to, something something to keep put, in mind. Something to keep in mind. You hear this, guys? <laughs> just do it yeah i want to i want yeah, to yeah yeah i do like i, I want to i mean i would love to do my own of course maybe something i've i've actually been talking about some things here and there with friends just like small short short things or something kind of like segment like at first sure and just a matter of time as far as getting together and getting something together but i do want to do something just because it, it just looks so fun it just looks so fun and i wouldn't even be i mean i wouldn't even care as far as if I made a bad movie, okay, cool, bad, bash it. I bash a lot of movies. <laughs> you know, I give them all credit for creating it, but I let them know that this one, you know, it's not for me. Yeah, totally, and, totally. And I'm the, with the review thing though. I'm, I'm a little less harsh with like indie, indie, indie. I try to be a little less harsh, but there's just some stuff. If it's bad, I'm gonna say it. And if you want to judge my podcast, I'm cool with that because. <laughs> Everybody, you know, everything's not for everybody. So I understand that. I greatly understand that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think there are people that are really passionate about film and it kind of shows. And there's other people that are just not. And they just kind of create. You can see when you see the movie, it's like, oh, they're just kind of phoning it in, you know. So, but like this movie, Crimes of the Future, if you like it or you don't like it, you can definitely see the passion in the filmmaking. Yes. It's very specific. The acting is really good um so even though you might look at it like what the heck was that but there <laughs> there is something um genuine it's almost like his his thumbprint is on every single shot in the movie you know good or bad you know depending on what you like but yeah. it's there i mean know? like honestly like you said a little while ago about how just being beautiful art and that's one thing i love about horror and i'm really understanding more about horror as an adult is just like the art of it is i'm just like this is beautiful art like yes it's blood guts and gore but look at the scenery. Look how they did this. Look how they made that look as good as they did to where you're jumping, you're screaming. That's affecting you. Yeah. And that's why I love horror so much. I mean, I, I wish I wish horror still scared me like it did as a kid, but only when I'm watching the movie. I don't need the nightmares and all that stuff. <laughs> I don't need to be sleeping with the lights on. My wife will probably look at me like I'm crazy. Like, you better turn them lights off. But mm-hmm. just that, you know what I mean? Just that, like, I jump scares get me here and there. I'll jump, but I'm not, it's just like, oh. Especially if I'm watching with the wife and she's jumping and I'm like really, <laughs> but I, I wish I could have that fear because that I, I miss that like adrenaline, not the adrenaline rush of like the excitement, but the, that other adrenaline, like that that fear thing. We're just like on the edge of your seat, like oh this this I'm alive. Like you're feeling it, you're the, you know the electricity and all that stuff, and right. you're scared, and you're scared, and <clears throat> but again. With all that, you still see this crazy, amazing art that just always draws you in. That just keeps drawing you in, drawing you in, drawing you in. Like I'm, I'm gonna be 38 in November. I've been watching horror since I was five years old, and I'm still <laughs> like, you know, I'm in awe with it. I'm still just like, oh my goodness, this is so, so, so cool. I got another movie recommendation for you too, called The Sadness. Oh, I read it. That I haven't heard of that one either. That one is, that one's crazy. That one's crazy. It doesn't sound is it a US film? Probably not. Uh sounds it's, like it's a foreign film. It is a foreign, yeah, it's a foreign film. It's a foreign yeah. film. Okay. 
but it's um that's actually it came out last year and i'm calling it a zombie flick because that's what it says on the cover my all-time favorite zombie movie and I, so i it came out last year but this is the this year is the first time i've seen it okay when i do work on my list people which i am going to work on that list maybe i'll work on it this weekend i doubt it but maybe but I'm doing, I want to do a top 13 list for the whole year of horror movies. Of course, 13, everybody knows why. And then a top 10 for each month, which will help me make that top 13 easier because I can just pick, you know, the top ones from each month. And you okay. know, a little thing on that at the end of the year or at the beginning of, or New Year's is probably how I start the episode or something like that. But um, what I was getting at with that is the sadness still is my favorite movie I watched this year. Okay. I it's haven't heard how, about it. how wild and crazy and just out there it was it's it's nuts but it's just like wow and it's, and if you pay attention to it, it tells a, a crazy story it tells okay. a wild story all in just whew, bloody gory all that fun stuff in a different way than this too in a whole different like i said because <laughs> this one right here is people doing the craziness that's great it's, yeah yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't really followed horror as much, obviously, as you have. I kind of did it when I was younger, like teenager, mm -hmm. early 20s, and then it just kind of I had a harder and harder time. Again, like you're saying, you get desensitized, A, and then B, I just it's hard to find the films that are as good as the ones that you liked, you know, like you know, certain ones. So mm -hmm. even though there's probably a lot out there, I, I just... Um, uh, I kind of almost gave up on, you know, trying to find them. But if I if I come across something that I really really like or that really kind of struck me, I will, yeah, you know, have friends over. We have like a big movie screen here, and we'll watch them and stuff like that. Um, but uh, it it becomes harder and harder to, um, I don't know, to find something. And then also, I kind of like I almost prefer the filmmaking, even if it's a if it's a well done film. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't have to be that scary. Um, and I find out, I find too, that people really don't like movies that are too scary. You know, they don't like audition. They don't like certain films. They like, oh, yeah, I want it to be fun, you know? Um, See, and I'm I'm back in, like, don't get me wrong. I love the fun, the silly, the whole, like, <laughs> I have a favorite horror comedy called Thanksgiving about a killer turkey. You can only imagine how good the actual movie is as far as a movie, but it's just, it's one of those things that you just sit there. <laughs> I'm a smoker, so I'll smoke a little weed and just enjoy it and just have a good time. Kind of like um actually Cocaine Bear, my second favorite horror comedy. It's okay. just one of those where you just kind of turn your brain off and just enjoy the moment. Just enjoy the moment, have fun, laugh. And then you don't go you don't watch these movies expecting it to be a masterpiece or expecting it to be artsy, like something like this, or like we we're saying audition. Right, right. Um, which Audition was a real was a good film, and I feel I honestly feel like if more people gave it a chance, they would enjoy it. The ones that do like the one I'll say if you if you enjoyed Midsommar, yeah, or, I did. or something like that. Check out Crimes of Our, Crimes of the Future, and check out um I forgot the freaking movie, but check out that movie I was just talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of the more artsy or you know oh, far up. Audition. Check out Audition. Audition that's, yeah, that's a good film. It's a good, crazy, and it's pretty empowering for women. If you if you think about it, in a strange, very violent. <laughs> oh yeah, movie. imagine the power you'll, never date, you'll never date a woman again. <laughs> so that, that, that's a good way of uh, you know, woman empowerment. Watch that. Watch that movie. I heard what the director did, which I I never heard of a director ever doing this. Was he um, he made the movie, but he tried to make. At towards the end of the movie, he made it kind of boring. Mm. So you're kind of like, oh, okay. And then he hits you with the end, which is so hard, you will <laughs> never forget it. <laughs> and I remember thinking, wow, you can actually bore the audience on purpose so that you can hit them at hit the end with, with both barrels. And, and you will never forget the end of that movie <laughs> as long as you live. <laughs> yeah, go out... I already spoiled it for you guys when I reviewed it. So you could either watch the review. Actually, yeah, watch, watch the review anyway. Watch, watch the movie first. And then yeah, watch, watch the movie first. Yeah. Because it's one of those things I don't want to ruin it for you right now. Because it's just, you're just like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And that's why I said with society, 
if anybody that's watching right now, society, check it out and jot down the word shunting and you will never forget that. Once you hear that and they're mentioning it in a movie, what that is, you will never forget that. Yeah, Ever. Absolutely. And you're, you're welcome for that because you're probably going to be like, why did, he, why did he tell me to watch this? <laughs> <laughs> and on top of that, why did I finish this movie? You're welcome. That's why. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Now, aren't, aren't you working on a movie or have something? Yes, I've been working on it for about four and a half years now, which is That's crazy. Awesome. But yeah, <clears throat> so it's science fiction, though. And uh, yeah, so we've storyboarded the entire film. We designed the whole darn thing thousands of drawings. Um, we may have someone uh, who's interested in 3D printing one of the characters full size. Ooh. So he'll be eight feet tall. Oh, damn. So we'll have an eight foot tall creature at our booth at Monster Palooza, hopefully. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we've got, um, hopefully we're going to bring out an animator now. Um, basically the premise of the movie is that it was made in 1976. So you know, people find this old film canister and what the heck is this? So it has all the old school special effects, like miniatures and, and stop motion, no CG. Thank you. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so we're bringing on a stop motion animator and hopefully what we're going to do, well, not hopefully we will do is we're going to shoot one scene and that'll be a proof of concept that we can show around and try to get raise money to do the whole movie. So that's the idea. Well, send that scene on over here, whatever you're allowed to show, and I'll show it on every single episode. You guys drop the Indiegogo, and all that good stuff. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Indeed. So, yeah, I realized you know, a few years ago, I was like, you're not getting any younger, and if I really want to do this, I have to do it now because mm -hmm. I'm not going to have the, the stamina to do it 10 years from now. And I don't have the stamina to shoot four or five small indie films to work my way up to the big one i need to do the big one right now you know there's no more no more messing around so yeah. um so we did all the storyboards and we put together like a story reel and people can watch it we have people come over to the house pop some popcorn and you actually watch the entire movie with storyboards sound effects music oh. and dialogue and uh at the end that i take notes People are like, oh, I didn't understand this. That was great. And so the more notes I've taken and the more screenings, the better it's gotten. The less notes, the more like, oh, that was great. You know, so it's like these pre-screenings that we we're doing mm -hmm. to get it smoothed out, like ironing a shirt where you can smooth out all the wrinkles to finally, you know, because if you're doing something new that people haven't seen before, it has to be great. It yeah. can't just be good because people aren't going to, ah, whatever you know? And, um, I knew that no matter how good it was, they're not going to let me direct it, you know? So mm -hmm. I said, well, let me direct it in the storyboard. So let me direct the entire thing. So I can say, here's how I would direct it. Here's the exact timing. Here's every single okay. shot and so on. So, uh, so yeah, we'll see. Um, I, I'm definitely, uh, there's definitely, I've never taken a project this far in my life, you know? And um, it's going to every every day is like a little baby step forward. You know, it's pretty exciting. So we'll see how it goes. That's, I can't wait to see it. Like that's that's some I love when people come on and they're talking about their films that they're creating. All that. I'm just like, I just can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see that final product, especially once you get to see like the uh, even if it's just a mock up poster, the mock up movie poster, the mock up movie cover. And you're like, oh, locked in, locked in. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's cool. going to be awesome. That's going to be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's definitely a labor of love. Um, and I don't, I don't know if there's that many people out there in Hollywood trying this. Um, you know, actually storyboarding an entire film and designing mm -hmm. the whole thing. Very rare. Um, I know they did that for The Matrix. Um, it was such a strange film. And I don't think the directors ever did anything for science fiction before. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what do you mean? What's the matrix? I don't understand it. So they had comic book artists storyboard the entire film so people can see how it looks beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, and that's helpful, you know, because people sign with fantasy, sci-fi, you can't really picture it. Yeah. So I'm kind of trying to take that, that, that side of things and going through the process. It took us two and a half years 
if you can imagine just to storyboard this thing we just finished it like two days ago the storyboard so wow. yeah it's pretty crazy wow it's pretty crazy yeah that's oh man that's so, that's so cool that's def that's definitely a labor of love i've hear i hear that so much about just film creation especially in the independent side where it's like um yeah this is coming out of our pockets this isn't going into our pockets at all <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I haven't made a penny yet so far on this thing. Yeah. Paid a lot, but haven't <laughs> haven't made a penny. I'm being paid by joy. That's all. <laughs> but I I know like once it's all said and done, once it's out there, it's like oh my goodness, it's finally out there. This masterpiece, my your baby, your whatever you want to call it, all that is just out there for the world to see, and that's that's be a great feeling. It has to be a great feeling making a creating a film and just putting it out there for everybody to see uh yeah and and very nerve-wracking too <laughs> yeah yeah i'm especially the first couple of times especially that first theatrical screening or that first big screening however however that's done i have no idea i've never been to one yet speaking into existence too and yeah oh man all that i'm sure it has to be like nerve-wracking and just but still at the same time like i'm doing this like this is so cool like i'm nervous but this is so cool i'm finally doing this i finally did this and I just can't wait to see it. Thank you. Thank you. I remember I had my first screening um, and it wasn't good. I, I was like a third of the storyboards are missing. So just staring at a black screen and <laughs> had, had a bunch of friends over. And then afterwards they had a talk and, you know, oh, that was fine. I like this and that. And inwardly, inwardly, I was thinking, you're a failure. You should, <laughs> you should give up on life. This is horrible. <laughs> How did you get um, some I yeah, just... but then, but then, you know, I picked myself up and you know brushed the tears away, and I said, um, "The next screening is going to be is going to be ten times better." And um, it was it was literally like another year of work to get it to this to, to another stage. And then I then I was happy. I was okay. This is what I want to say. And it's strange what people say, you know, like, "Oh, what about this? Oh, I didn't think about that. What about that? Oh, damn, I didn't think about that." Um, and the funny thing is, the movie I pictured is making a PG-13 movie. I want it to be more universal. Mm -hmm. But every time someone asked me a question, what about this? I would answer them in an R-rated answer. I'm like, okay, I'm going to show you. <laughs> so it's turned into an R-rated movie because uh, oh. it, it kind of pulls the, it pulls you out of you. It's like, oh, I can tell you're holding back. All right, here you go. I'll, I'll give it to you. See? So... It, it reminds me a little bit of maybe something like audition where you have moments of intensity, mm -hmm. but it's not all the way through. It's just a little bit here, a little bit there. It's going to be like, oh man. Um, but uh, but yeah, just kind of trying to pull together everything that I've been thinking about ever since I was like twelve years old. Oh, it's uh, yeah, it's been really exciting. So that's. I, I like that. I like that. <laughs> and then I, what you were just saying about the whole PG-13 Universal, you know, I'm like, okay, I get that. But when you said the R rating, I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and just because I, not that you can't tell a great story and all this other good stuff with within whatever realm you want to tell it in, but sometimes I feel like, I'm like, okay, if th this movie could have been better, if they could have just pushed it over the edge, just that, that little thing to something because something like you're just saying about holding it back a little and i'm so i can now oh man now i'm just like, yeah. <laughs> even more even more i'll say yeah well i have a we have an art book you know of the film I'll, I'll show that to you for sure so you can kind of see what we're what we're thinking and i honestly just like from your art style from the art that i've you know that i've seen you do and i'm like this has to be an r rating <laughs> <laughs> this, this has to be an R rating, right? How can you possibly, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's kind of going in that direction, you know. More like there's some, just some incredibly violent moments. Um, no, no real eroticness to the film at all. But there's just some brutal, uh, and this is the way in life. Life has brutality to it, and you know, so it's not. We're not trying to entice the audience. It's just that's just the way life is. You know, everything is fine. Next thing you know, you get hit broadsided by some terrible thing, and it's just that's, that's just true. life. 
Yeah, so. that's very true. And and I mean, with the with the whole movie thing though, like yeah, you can say that's like life too. But people, you got to remember in a movie, you one if it bothers you, you don't have to watch it. Two, you can stop, rewind, play, fast forward, all that stuff. You can't do that with life. <laughs> exactly. You can't do that with life. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. So, um, so yeah, so I feel, um, you know, it's, it's weird. It's definitely a marathon, you know, some days I feel like, oh man, I wish I was working more and other days I'm like, oh, you accomplished so much. Um, and the weird thing about doing an indie film is you can stop at any time and no one will care. And I think that's the, that's the most devastating because you're the only one that's pushing that boulder up the hill. I mean, yes, there's friends that are supporting you, but people aren't really going to care. Like, oh, I didn't work on the film for three months. I don't care. So you have to put that care into it. You have to say, no, I care, and Mm -hmm. I'm going to put myself on the schedule or something, and I'm going to keep pushing that that boulder up the hill. And, you know, so that's the scariest thing for me is I could just stop it right now. No one will ever see it, and no one will care. Um, But... If you do get it out there, and it is people do like it, then I'm like, oh man, so I'm so glad that you did. I'm so glad you didn't give up. There's so many classic films that we've seen that what happens if what if George Lucas, what if he said, ah, people aren't liking it. I'm just not gonna do this Star Wars thing. We wouldn't no one would care because we didn't know. Now we really care. Because oh my god, what if he didn't do it? You know? Yeah. And I'll even go with the horror realm if say a Friday the thirteenth. A Friday the Thirteenth never came out, or to another extent, if they never made the sequels, yeah, we'd never have, we'd, we'd have Friday the Thirteenth, which would, pro- which would maybe go down as like that, uh, really good kind of woman as the the killer in that, which it, right. it does. But I mean, if it's solo, it'll stand out so much more than it being a part of you know a bunch of other movies. And I'm just just thinking about that. I'm like, yeah, you're right. And a lot of stuff back in the day with horror, as a lot of you know, in the 80s and 70s and all that stuff, that was a lot of independent stuff that was just caught exactly. its break somehow. And 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years later, because if you go back or 100 years later, if you go back all the way to like the Frankenstein stories to getting those in the movies, like we're still... <laughs> so it, something, something's right. Something had to happen. So hopefully with your story and other stories with other independent creators, a hundred years down the road, someone else is doing a variation of it and just still kind of, that'd be cool. cool. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. One thing, imagine if you had like, um, I don't know, film contests where everyone had to do a 10 minute version of Friday the 13th, like their own version of it. You know, you get the ski mask. Um, how fun that would be. Then it's not like you're watching it, you're in it, you know, and it could be so indie, you know, like people are just doing it with ketchup on their face and oh, you know, plastic knife. He's putting ideas in my head. <laughs> not just for me to create, but for me to just try to get something together with people, you know, creating something, then we'll just show it on live. We'll have some votes and we'll do something fun for the person that wins or whatever. We'll Absolutely. See. We'll see. Absolutely. I think Play it right on here. And have a great time with it. Oh. Yeah, 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 totally. Because you you guys know these films backwards and forwards, you know. Um, but whenever you watch a movie, you're always probably thinking, yeah, but if, if I was there, I would change this, or I would do this a little better, or I would do this, and I would maybe do the colors like this. And then you just start doing it. And next thing you know, you wake up like, wait a minute, I'm a filmmaker. You know, <laughs> it's like, how did that happen? Just that, you know. <laughs> so, so, um I love that. Yeah. I love yeah, that. I think the trick to this whole game is don't do anything too challenging. You know, keep it simple. Mm-hmm. You know, take those little baby steps. You know, like if it's a Friday the 13th parody, you're not going to spend a million dollars on it. So, and you're only doing it in a week. But mm-hmm. getting out there and, you know, okay, I've done it. I'm, I'm calling action and cut and people are doing things. That's filmmaking right there. It's not Hollywood. It's not these really fancy cameras and these big actors. It's going out there, pre- saying action. Someone does something, press cut, cut it together, throw some music on it, and call it a day. Um, and then, as you again, you keep doing it over and over again, and you, you're probably going to challenge yourself. Oh yeah, okay, let's do, let's do something else. Let's do a car. Let's do something in a car. We'll have a moving car this time, just because mm-hmm. we haven't done that before. 
And without even trying, it, it gets a little better every time, you know, if you have passion for it, which, you know, obviously yeah. you do. So it's true. It's very yeah. true. And, it, it, and you know, it's funny. It's funny you say that like that, because as far as like, pod, I have friends that want to get into podcasting and talk to, I've had friends that I've gotten into podcasting and people see where I'm like, how you were talking about like where I'm at now with it, with the visuals and all that. And they see that. And they see the equipment I have for, you know, my friends that have been here or just being at cons and all that. And they're just like, you know, I need to get this, 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 this. To, and I'm just like, you don't. You could start out just like you're saying with me with the movies and stuff. You could start out with this thing right here. Turn the video on, do what you got to do, hit record and upload it. And the reason why I say upload it with these, if you know how to edit some edit, but upload it, put it on YouTube from your very first piece of that content all the way up to where you're at, like, say, two years from now. Because you're going to see your growth. Even if you say you start with video, I did, I started with just audio and then got into video slowly but surely. And then when the pandemic came, I really got into it more and more. But put it out there, people. Seriously, put that out there and don't care about if you do your live shows or if you do whatever. Don't look at the YouTube views. Don't care about any of that. Cause exactly. Yeah. If you care about that kind of stuff, you're going to quit. Mm -hmm. If you care about that kind of stuff, you're going to quit because you're not going to get the result. You may never get the results. You aren't putting that kind of type of stuff out there, but you're doing something you want to do. You're doing something you have a passion for. You will eventually gain a following. I'm not saying you'll never gain a following. You definitely will. But just put it out there. Just put it out there. Seriously. Like that. It took me a couple of years to get my podcast out. <laughs> my wife was yelling <laughs> at me for it. She got me the equipment. But I was also planning stuff. And I was also doing like before the podcast, I was doing um like unboxing videos. I used to get horror things and i used to get my dog a bark box so i'm about to do videos of that just unboxing but just to kind of sure. get used to talking out there to the people because you know if i'm out here streaming on my on my own i have to talk to the people out there <laughs> totally. And, totally. You know, me doing that more and more and yeah so again people just put it out there because you're always going to wonder what if what if or okay i'm going to start this when i have this 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 but i'm like if you have this already you're already in the game you're already in the game absolutely record, put that piece of if you want to do that put that piece of content out there and boom and if you need some pointers if you know me reach out my email's in the description reach out i'll i'm not the best i can help you as much as i can and give you a few pointers but the thing i'm going to tell you mainly is put that out there with whatever you have the equipment you have eventually save up eventually save up for that stuff because you don't you don't want to go out there and say you get yourself a really good computer say a gaming computer because you want to you know edit your videos you get yourself a mixer mm -hmm. you spend all this money and then you're just like you quit in six months because you just right. like eh, it's too much or nobody's watching or anything that's and that that's like the main thing that's the main thing nobody's watching or here's another one here's a here's a big big one bigger than nobody's watching is money as far as making money <laughs> i was right. on a, so I was on a podcast panel actually a few times when I would go, when there was this kind out here, Scaricon, I'd get a media pass. They'd give podcasters a media pass and they'd want us to host the panels, which was awesome because I mean, really quick, I'm happy as hell about this. Friday the 13th part seven is my favorite one. I got to host that panel, be up there on stage with them, talk with them and all that. And that was, that was amazing. Bringing it out to me and all that stuff. And that was awesome. So same stage, same room, actually. Big old room, the main room. They had us up there, a podcast panel with all the podcasts up there just kind of talking about it. I remember one of the questions was where someone was like, so do you guys make any money podcasting? And mind you, I only had maybe 40 episodes out at the time. I think. It was, sure. I know it was the first time I brought my, no, second time I brought us to the kind. First or second. Anyway. And um, I was like, no. I was like, if I told them this exactly, I said, listen, I said, if you get into podcasting to make money, you're not going to, I said, you'll do maybe five to 10 episodes and you're going to quit. Cause you're not going to see any revenue coming in at all. If you're doing it to make money, don't do it. If you're doing it as a passion product, as a passion thing, money may come. I'm not saying it's impossible. There's a lot of work to it. And especially if you have to work your nine to five and all that stuff, there's a lot of work to it. Yeah, Being sure. Responsible. There's affiliates and all that other stuff. But don't do it for the money. Do it because you love it. Because if you're doing it just for the money, you're not going to last long. You're going to quit. You're going to give up. And again, that's why I'm saying, if you have your cell phone, start with this. If you don't have a computer and all that and the fancy microphones, start with this. And if you have a computer and stuff, just get a USB mic. If you don't have a good mic and all that, get a USB mic, 
I'm sure you have headphones. Damn it, everybody has headphones, and just start from there. Make Absolutely. It easy and <clears throat> fall in love with it to the point where you're just like, okay, now I want to do this. Now I want to do that. Shoot, you can even start on TikTok. You can start on YouTube, YouTube shorts, stuff like that. Do it. I got to yeah. do it with people. I know I got to get on the TikToks and all that other stuff more. <laughs> I can't get out more to help me grow more, but put it out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Even uh, at the beginning of film, they made silent movies, right? So mm -hmm. you can make a silent film and just throw music on it afterwards. So you film it. You don't have to worry about microphones or anything. Mm -hmm. Add some music afterwards and call it a day. You got a silent horror film, you know? It's pretty cool. There you go. And that's that's really outside the box and different because people aren't doing that anymore. Right. People exactly. aren't doing that anymore. Do something, you know, do something when you get to that level. I mean, if it has to be simple, but just think, keep it simple. Yes, keep it easy, keep it cheap. But it's like, okay, what can I do that's simple, easy, cheap, easy? Or I'm not going to say easy, like there's no talent or skill towards it, but do that. And then just think outside the box a little bit like, okay, what is everybody not doing? How about I do this movie in black and I can put my camera phone black and white. How about we just shoot this all in black and white? And then put that Absolutely. out there and just keep doing that for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just just little just little things like that. Little editing things you can, you know, little editing programs on your phone that are free. Do little things like that. And eventually it'll grow and the passion will grow for it. Because that's, I mean, yes, I started with my computer, but I had my computer. But I started with a lot of free programs. And eventually, uh, now I pay for those pro paid for those programs to do a little bit right. more. But I waited until I had that passion for that passion for it like this is this january past was five was my five-year anniversary of doing this of releasing my very first episode so wow great I'm keep going <laughs> i'm gonna keep going. yeah i because I, it's it's like my um it's just relaxing in a strange way talking because i'll talk to anybody on these things but it's just relaxing it's just i don't even want to say like a getaway in a sense of life is bad because i'm genuinely a happy ass person but just just that kind mm -hmm. of this is like my realm. This is my world. Like this is, I'm in control of this. No one can tell me anything type of thing and just have a good time with it. Laugh, smile, whatever. And, you know, go about your day with it. And it's, yeah, I think that's amazing. That's fantastic. It's rewarding. That's it's so rewarding to, for me to do this. And I know it is for you with all the amazing stuff you've done, but to do this and then for people, I don't care if it's just one person, but for, for people to just watch your stuff and tune into your stuff and look forward to you putting something out or, a few times, like say, if I take a little break, hey, start, you you good? What's going on? <laughs> just mm -hmm. last was it last week or the week before last? I had to switch some days around, so I, so I usually drop my shows Tuesday and Thursday at eight o'clock Eastern time, go live then. But I had to switch it to Monday and Wednesday a couple weeks ago, and one of my friends was like, "What's today?" <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, that I had to, you know, just had to switch it up. Just had to switch it up. But it's right. it, but again, it's it's cool that people are like they know what time my show goes live and know what days my shows go live and they're there and that's cool. That feel, it feel, it's such a rewarding, like there's two people watching right now. They're not saying anything in the comments because they're too shy. Don't be shy people. <laughs> and I can't see who it is. Restream. We need to work on that so I can start calling these people out. <laughs> but seriously, just again, if you want to create, do it, whatever you want to do in life, I guess just go for it and try it. But yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, that might be something we could talk about later on is maybe coming up with like a film contest or something that would be streamed yeah. on here and, you know, people can do some stuff and, you know what I mean? Just kind of. Oh, yeah. Just do it, as they say. <laughs> I I think, uh, I think you know, what we, we got to talk some more because, uh, yeah, I think we just kind of made it a plan without realizing we were going to be making a plan, which. <laughs> exactly. Oh, exactly. Here. That, that's usually how stuff happens, though. I swear. It's usually how yeah. stuff happens. And hey, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. That's great. But I do want to bring up and grab the link for really quick. Your Kickstarter, so you can let people know about that awesome thing. Thank so, you, thank you. Yeah, we're, I think we're in the mid middle area now. We're uh, we got about 15 days left, so we're right in the middle of our uh, campaign. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, here. This over. Close some of these windows real quick. This one, this one. Ooh, excuse me. Oh. Share the screen. Boom, boom, boom. 
And here we go. Let's blow it up. Oh, there you go. So, uh, yeah. So the idea was to create a series of like uh, clothing, backpacks, pillows, and things that relate to the comic book called Zentropa, but the comic book also evolved into the movie. So if you, um, let's say you get the backpack or whatever, there's going to be clues inside the clothing about the movie. You know, it's just, it's all these little clues about this and that in the, in the film. So that's awesome. Thanks, man. Thank that's you. freaking awesome. And <laughs> I do, I have a question. I hope sure. you can answer it. That's one. And which, so my wife and I, actually, I'm going to show you exactly what we got. I oh, got, you got this, something. this pillow right here. Cause red's my favorite color. <laughs> Great. I got her that. And this bag right here. Whoa, that's awesome. So there's some awesome, 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 amazing stuff on here. People that you got just back this project. Look, look at this art. And he just told you that this is going to give you some clues to the movie. Come on, yeah, come on. yeah, it's pretty cool. So we we were able to order all of these as like testing. So we've been able to test the materials and and to see it in person. Um, the the fabric and the quality is really nice. It so is. once the yeah once the Kickstarter is done, um, we'll be taking these physically to the next conventions and getting it out there. But it's kind of everything is discounted for the you know, for the Kickstarter, you mm -hmm. know, to give it some kind of, um, you know, people an incentive to maybe give it a try. You hear that people, it's discount. So listen, people, if, if you plan on buying this, I'm not saying don't, don't buy it once that the cons <laughs> buy that too. But if you really do play discounts, we love sales. We love discounts. It's going to be discounted, right? The creator said it himself. <laughs> Get, listen, people, everybody buy something, buy these. Cause once they're gone, they're gone. Yeah, thank and you. Collectors, collectors, and I'm talking to myself with this one too, but I, I got some, so I'm good. You know those times where you go, you're like, oh man, I wish I could have got this when it came out, or oh man, I should have grabbed that. This is your old oh, man, I should have grabbed that. <laughs> don't, don't don't miss that moment. Don't mess that moment up, because I did it. Thank, thank you. Um, so the video that we shot, um, we almost got in trouble for that because we were shooting in LA um, in a place we weren't, we didn't have any permits. And it was like on this train, this old kind of train track. Right. And we have these realistic guns that painted them. They look real. And we're running around shooting this stuff. A plane car rolls up. The guy comes out. You can see he has a gun and a real gun in his, in his um, pants. He pulled oh. the shirt over. So this is real. So I said, drop the guns, drop the guns. <laughs> drop the guns. So they dropped the guns. Yeah, our friends dropped the guns. It was an undercover cop. And he said, uh, he said, you know, you guys could get killed for what you're doing right here. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he said that there's so many drug dealers around there that when they see you're running around with these guns, they're going to shoot you. So wow. thank goodness. Uh, well, thank goodness we didn't get arrested. <laughs> But uh, but yeah. So after that, we packed up and we went and filmed another place. I thought we were gonna get arrested again, but but we filmed in another place with the the guys has a flamethrower. I'm like, dude, we're gonna get arrested. <laughs> um, anyway, so we went to another place and did the flamethrower scene. So that kind of has meaning to me. It's like, oh my god, we could have gotten shot right there. Um, anyway, is, um, is that in the uh, is that in the video on the Kickstarter? Yeah, on the Kickstarter, you'll see this girl is running into a field. And, and can, I, uh, can I show that on here? Or is that yeah, you can show it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, if you want to show the, the video. Um, right, I'll do that. I just want to make sure it was cool before I just hit play. But oh, yeah, totally. Check this video out, people. The original Zentropa Kickstarter was fully funded on the very first day. The comic Zentropa is a psychedelic stream of consciousness. Two space explorers try and figure out what's happening to their planet. Its odd organic growths begin appearing everywhere. Is this a biological attack from another race? Or something coming from within their own planet? As of now, 
The original book has sold in over 50 different countries and has been recognized by several prominent names in the entertainment and publishing industry. Now John is reaching out to you to help him get his news Entropa chapter into the world. <laughs> Now John is reaching out to you to help him get his news intro chapter into the world. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, I think we lost your audio. I forgot I muted my mic so it wouldn't dub. That was awesome. That I was just like, oh my goodness. And the flamethrower, I started, I had this big ass smile on my face. <laughs> And then I the uh, when you started showing the actual stuff, though, I'm like, oh my goodness, the way the colors pop, and I seen the black the pillow, the black and red pillow, and the pink one that I, I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. It, it's one of them things where it's like, if I had more money, I'd be like, well, <laughs> let me go back and change my Kickstarter again and grab a few more. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> awesome. We'll be getting Thanks. stuff more in the future. That's that's some that's some really really cool stuff. Thank you, thank you. That that flamethrower stuff was terrifying. I would I refuse to put the flamethrower on myself. Like, oh, I'll try it. Oh, this was homemade. Crazy. This is a guy who had a butane pack on his shoulder. He made the thing himself, and you just shoot it out of your arms. I'm like, dude, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> See, I'm in the middle because that sounds so tempting. <laughs> like, hang on, really? You really you're going to let me use this? Okay, but then it's like. He said he built it. Not that he can't, but how many times has he successfully done this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, he know he he's you know he's done well, but that stuff scares me. So even filming it, you're, the flame is coming right at my face. You know, I mean, not really, but yeah, you can feel the heat. It's uh, you know, it was kind of some dangerous stuff. So yeah, the part where the girl is running is like this yellow background, a train. 
Mm-hmm. That was a whole elaborate scene, but that was where the police pulled up, and uh, you know, we oh. uh, we we dodged a bullet to the, literally. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. Oh, all for the all in the name of art. So oh, yeah. yeah, which means even more so, people. This is why you need to support the Kickstarter. And when the movie comes out, when I don't know, are you gonna speaking of that? Are you gonna do a Kickstarter like an Indiegogo for the film? That, we've been I've been talking about that a lot with my friends over the years, and I'm not sure. You know, it's I don't know because um, they need a lot of money to make a movie, but mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Um, we're trying to raise um, or we're trying to put together some money for the first scene, so it's possible that we could do like a book that has all the storyboards, and you get this. You know, you buy the book with the storyboards, and that helps fund the first scene of the movie. You know, I mean that type of thing. I like that. Um, yeah, I can. I can actually let me, let me bring over some of the storyboards. I can show you. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, this is why. This is why you guys got to be tuning in to Horror Research Thirty because I get some cool guests on here that just show some dope stuff. <laughs> some dope stuff. Yeah, this has never been seen by the public. So um, I'm just gonna bring your screen up so it's seen a little bit easier, John. Yeah. So we've got. Um, let me just pick some interesting boards here. We've got well, but it does what I the storyboard artist he sends me these sketchbooks. I have about 10 of them. Uh I had about three or four or five storyboard. Oh man, look at this. Um, yeah, here's some of his storyboards. I don't know if you can see with the glare. You can kind of yeah, there you go. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. So imagine thousands of these. Um, by this one artist. I already want one. (laughs) You know, know, he's storyboarding all these, all these really amazing scenes. Gosh. So, so the idea was, I asked the artist. Oh, these are great. I asked the. I said, take your time. Don't worry about if they take a little longer to draw. Mm -hmm. You know, because it'll be worth it in the long run. Oh man, these are great. Okay, so anyway, (laughs) showing too much, but um. Yeah, here's some more of the storyboards. And that's a teaser right there, people. And listen, listen, you can get your hands on one of these to help fund the movie because it sounds like <laughs> storyboards to sell. So, yeah, so we have about, um, I don't know, like 12 of these of these um, books full of storyboards. Mm-hmm. And then I also have another, you know, um, other artists have done storyboards. And then we have like a thick book of just all the artwork that's been done for the film. So. It's uh, it's pretty cool, you know. Um, I keep saying this. It, let's say the worst happens and nothing happens from this point forward. All we have is a storyboard book, like an illustrated script, and that's all. I still would be really proud of that, you know. I wanted to go all the way to Hollywood and get on the big screen, but I'm really proud of what we've already done so far, you know. So it's it no put. It's going on the big screen. It's going on the big screen. That's fun. But what you guys have done so far is is awesome. And I'm being serious, like with that storyboard stuff. And the reason why I was asking with the Indiegogo, I'm not as far as this. I'm as far as the side of creating it. I've I have no clue. I'm on the buying side. <laughs> but just like the cool perks that they have with like some perks as far as like just having your name in the credits of the film when it goes off, right? I mean, something like the storyboard and just I mean even some stuff from the from the Kickstarter, maybe down the road, if you were to do an Indiegogo, having some of those things in there as well. Um, if you were going to distribute the film, like people do DVDs, Blu-rays, and even just like a T-shirt with that on it, right? You know, That'd be cool. Like that, and people that way, it's like with that way with the Indiegogo, it's like of course you're getting that. Like I'm getting this. And yes, I'm paying for it, but I'm getting this. Like I'm paying for the movie. I'm, I'm going to get the movie whenever it comes out. But I'm already going to have, you know, the I'm going to have the movie before it goes to the the big distributors. I'm going to have it way before them because I'm getting the one that's, you know, like that. Right. And exactly. I'm, I'm, as far as me, I love that stuff. I I can't tell you how many independent movies I have laying around. Actually, I have <laughs> right, right here the Sawyer Massacre, and I got one right here that actually just came today. Actually, it's a Friday the Thirteenth film fan film called uh, "Victim No More," and the Sawyer. I heard of that one. Now, yes. I wonder how do they make that without 
you know, getting copyright issues. I guess because it's not called Friday the Thirteenth. Well, the, well, I think that, and they they can't they don't make money off of the fan films. They can't make any money off of it. Okay. So I think I think that's what it is. But there there's some. I'll just as a matter of fact, I'm gonna send you some of those though because there's some good. Like when you're watching them, you're like, oh my goodness, this. Some of them. Okay. <laughs> there's some that's in there you, you could almost see them fitting into the like the Friday the Thirteenth movies but i'll, okay. I'll send, and to top it off those are all on youtube so i'll definitely i'll give you those links okay you those that you're gonna i think you'll enjoy i think you'll enjoy those i think that's really great cool. well very cool very good um yeah so <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely been a journey um the one thing i could say too you know to the young people out there is start early and just do it, you know. Um, I did start early, but I didn't work hard enough when I was younger. I, I did. Oh, I did the work. I should say I didn't work hard enough getting it out there. You know, I just I would do a film, show it to a couple people, then put it on my shelf. Oh, it's not good enough, you know. And I, I shouldn't have done that. What I should have done is really hustled. Get the film out there, try to raise some interest, get some uh, representation, like an agent or something. Yeah. I just never felt my stuff was good enough. So, um, and I didn't work, I didn't push myself hard enough. So what I what I would do if I could go back now and if I was 20 years old, is I'd give myself a three-year plan and say, mm -hmm. here's where you want to be in three years, do or die, you know. Um, but I didn't do that. So I kind of... Um, did a lot of fun things, but I didn't focus on the thing I really want to do the most, which is, you know, making movies. So, so now I do have a three-year plan, you know, it's better late than never, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, that type of thing and just really pushing yourself, you know, um, maybe if I pushed myself harder when I, when I left Disney, I would have really dug deep into the independent films, but I was just jumping around, doing freelance work, paying the rent and stuff like that, and still watching movies and studying them every night, but not um, not really hitting those film festivals really, really hard and really getting out there and selling yourself, which can be embarrassing, you know? Um, so, so, yeah, that was definitely something. If I can go back in time, I would, I would, I would be much more aware of the time. Mm-hmm. You know, I have said to my friends, you can lose 20 years in the blink of an eye, like easily. Tell you know? me, like, I, I'm just realizing this. <laughs> I feel like just yesterday I'm getting off the school bus and now I'm just like, oh, damn, I got to go to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it, it really happens that fast. And you're, you're absolutely right with that, though, as far as <clears throat> when it comes to something, just go for it, try it, do it. And again, especially nowadays and just speaking on just content creation we all have that little device that we carry around every day <laughs> that we carry around every day and it's just to just start with that just start with that little things do a freaking two minute short do a exactly. one minute short do a 30 second short do a 30 second skit and just build on from that if you want to do that same with podcasts can do you don't have to have an hour show two hour do a 20 minute show do a 10 minute show and just get going until you're comfortable with doing more or whatever the case may be. And Absolutely. Try. Just Absolutely. try it. And yeah. You, you learn so much more from doing than do. anything else, you know? You so, really do. and uh, yeah, you, you do, you'll pick up these little sparks. Oh, maybe I can upgrade here. And what if we did that? And it's just natural. It's natural that you just grow. You know when you do this stuff, especially like you, like I was saying before, and you really uh, enjoy it, so it's awesome. And I'll, I'll say a, a big, big thing too is networking. And I'll say network people network with people that are bigger or smaller than you, because you never know who's going to see you, who's going to be next to you, what elbows you're rubbing, what you know those opportunities you're going to get. You never know that because that one person say that say start the podcast tomorrow. And you already had yours going for a few years, and for whatever reason they blow up, but you guys connected. You connected with them as soon as they. People don't forget stuff like that. They really don't. Yeah, absolutely. They really, really don't. So, and just, I mean, again, just networking 
getting not only getting yourself out there, but it's like, okay, I know you. I'm gonna help you. Yo, listen, go talk to him because he has some awesome stuff. And he'll say, hey, go talk to him, go talk to and it's just it's an awesome, beautiful thing. Even if it's in the same, like for me, in the same horror realm with other horror podcasters, I connect with them. We have different styles, even for all doing movie reviews, we all have different styles of how we do our own thing. You may share ideas with each other or something. I mean, for me, it's mostly movies. Like, hey, I'll listen to another horror podcast. Oh, I should check this movie out. And just I say networking, don't be afraid or offended by the word no. And what I mean by that is don't be scared to, hey, would you come on my podcast? Hey, would you be in my movie? Hey, what can can you give me some pointers on blah, 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 blah. The worst they're going to say is no. Don't be upset. Don't be offended by it. Don't be afraid to, don't not ask or reach out just because you think someone's going to say no. Because you never, then again, there's that what if, like, well, what if I just ask them? And you find out that they, oh, I'm. I was, hey, I was going to ask you if you were, oh, I would have loved to. Why? Of course I will. Of course I will. Like, I, yeah. do, I do it all the time. And I've gotten plenty of no's, but I've also gotten plenty of yeses. That's great. Just, <clears throat> That's a great attitude for sure. That's awesome. It, because it's life. Like, you, you can't, every, not, and everybody's not going to say yes to you. <laughs> if everybody said yes to you as far as, like, your dreams and all that, we would all be way further ahead. We'd all be, it'd be different. <laughs> or we'd be way further behind. You never, I, I don't know how that would work. <laughs> right. You, you, exactly. you, need, you do need those no's to make you maybe go a different, change some things up, maybe go a different route with certain things or just kind of. So, no's are important at the same time as well. Absolutely. That's great. Well, but just again, don't don't be scared of that stuff, people, because that I know that's things that hold a lot of people back as far as the networking thing goes that. And then as far as the views, as far as the finances coming in. People don't want to put their work out there because of that. Just do it. If you have a passion for it, just do it. Don't. It doesn't matter what I. If I review a movie and I say I hate the movie, don't take that personal. Don't take that personal because you didn't make it for me. You made it for you. And there's people out there that you made it for you. You created your content for you. Like I do this for me. I don't do. I don't do it for everybody out there. I do it for me because I love doing this. And then with that, I do enjoy people coming in and watching, of course. And it kind of becomes a mixture, but. If there was ever a time I, I stopped loving this, I wouldn't do it. Even if I was yeah. making a shit ton of money, I wouldn't do it because the passion would leave, the energy would leave, all that would go. So just just do it, people. If you have a passion for it, just do it. Just try it. And yeah, again, if that's great. It comes to podcasting, reach out. I mean, hey, I'll tell you this too. If you have your horror shorts, if they're two, three minutes, four minutes long, and you're just wanting to put something out there just for, to get eyes on it, come here. I'll put it right on the live show. I'll put it right on a live show just because why not? Let's help each other. Let's help each other grow. Let's help each other achieve, achieve the dreams. Stop this stupid competition. Cause there's more than enough for everybody out there. <laughs> and instead of us, you know, everybody fighting each other, it's like, wait a minute, you love horror. I love horror. They love horror. No matter what, you know, sub genre you love, we all love the horror, right? So let's all just help each other. I'm just using horror because that's just the podcast. Let's just help each other in this boom, 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 boom. Hey, come on, people. It's not again, it's not a competition. It is not yeah. a competition. You, know, you should be competing with yourself to how can I get better? How can I grow? How can I do something more to make my content better, more entertaining for myself? Like I enjoy doing it, but how can I get, you know, then how can I get more eyes? This, that, and the third. Come on, people. Yeah, that's great. That's uh Definitely great pieces of advice for sure. Is that now for you? Is networking easy out there for you? And with you having the name you have? No, no. <laughs> networking is always you're meeting people that you don't know, right? So, um, some it depends on the, the the personality. Some people are very that's just the way they are. They're very chatty and they. You know what I mean? They they go to all the parties and they meet everyone. And I, I definitely can feel I can be like a little bit more of a a hermit working in my cave a little bit too much. <laughs> so um, I don't I like meeting people when I go to conventions and stuff, and I love talking to people. But um, yeah, I would say I'm probably half in, half out. So yeah, there are. I mean, I definitely it's Hollywood. So. Um, there's screenings and there's events every night, every, every seven days a week here. 
Um, so it's the it's the okay. I got to get out, get in the car, and you know, go there. And and a, a lot of times, even though it's Hollywood or whatever you call that, people are still shy. You go to a, a party, people aren't going to be like, "Hey, how you doing?" They're going to be shy. You're shy. Everybody's shy. <laughs> Everybody wants something, but they don't want to ask. So it's it's um, unless they're all drunk, you know. Yeah. But um, it's not easy. It's not easy because um, there's different tiers. Like there's people that, you know, like the higher, like the big film directors mm -hmm. and produce, they have their own parties. You know, then we have the medium people, they have their own parties. Then you have the smaller people just getting started, they have their own. So yeah. it's very hard to interconnect with the other, the higher tiers, if, it, if that makes any sense. No, I get what you mean. Um, right. It's almost like they call it like breaking in somehow you know breaking into the business or whatever so um but i i think if you're open to that and if you do meet someone that you really admire go up to them shake their hands say i really love your work and you know don't don't be shy about reaching out to those people um, oh that's me all day yeah <laughs> there you well, go i mean and <clears throat> just like in the convention settings i'll say i'm not afraid to like go up and just talk to them whatever ask them to come on the podcast like as a matter of fact um Nine Ryan Elm Street Part Three, Ken Sagos. I got him on my podcast a couple of years. Actually, I had him on like last year too, but a couple of years back in person at that same con I was discussing earlier, Scarecon. I was there with my wife and well, we're brothers basically. My brother Henry moved out to Colorado that same. Was it that same? No, it wasn't that same year. It was like a year before. But he moved out to Colorado that year, <clears throat> and Ken Sagos was coming there, and. uh so anyway, I go over to Ken Sago's sale, talking to him, talking to him. Got on it got to the it got to the point to where me and the wife are walking around the con when I'm taking a break from my table, walking around the con, talking whatever, buying stuff. Hey Aaron, come over, come over here, come come hang out with me. Go hang out behind the table with him, talk to him. And that's all just because I, I don't have that shy personality when it comes to when I'm in there, I feel like I'm at home. When yeah, I'm in stuff like that, I feel like I'm at home and just go up and talk. I mean I'm there to get autographs and stuff anyway. So I'm like, I might as well show you a conversation. I might as well talk about the podcast. But the cool thing about that with him was he didn't, first of all, he didn't even know what a podcast was. <laughs> uh -huh. he, was like, he was like, what is that? I basically told him, I was like, it's very similar to like talk radio. It's the best way I could explain it. And I was telling, you know, I was like, you know, I got my equipment. I was like, Cause I said, I didn't even ask him to come on that day. I was just saying, I would love to have you on one day. Just that, cause I mean, he, the guy's make, making money at his table. I don't ever want to, you know, take that from somebody. But he was like, you know what, Aaron? He's like, give me about a half hour. Come back and get me, and we can do something. And he kept his word. He kept his word, and that was awesome. And that's not even the highlight. The highlight is I got to buy him some fried chicken. Like I get to, buy <laughs> I bought him some fried chicken from that place. Which, quick, 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 funny story with that. So when me and him were recording, right, those people that worked there at the con, and they just happened to be walking by, they're you know going through the con. I think they were finished, or they worked in that casino. I don't know if they worked at the con, but they worked in that casino. And, you know, and they stopped at the table and me and him were recording and we were talking about stuff. And we, I think we we're getting ready to wrap up. We we're talking about food. And one of the girls there was was like, no, the, she's like, don't get the chicken down there. It's nasty. And after they left, I was like, no, trust me. That <laughs> down there is amazing. I remember. I, so me and my wife went down there to get dinner. I grabbed him some chicken because the con was ending. Gave him the chicken. The next day when I seen him, he was like, Aaron. That chicken was awesome. I was like, <laughs> and like that right there is always going to stick with me. Stuff like that, just like little things like that is always going to stick with me. And again, that's going back to just going to these things, having these opportunities and just doing it. Just, hey, boom, here I am. And that's great. I, I, I'm not afraid of them. Again, he, he could have easily just said no. Or he mm -hmm. could have said yes and did the whole, I guess, quote unquote, Hollywood thing. Said yeah. yes, but then never shows up. <laughs> like, here's my information, but it's fake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Just, just, <clears> that's so like, cool. It it make it makes me <clears throat> like when I get to go to these conventions and just see how see how they are, see how you know the celebrities are for those movies. It makes me it makes me enjoy horror more. It makes me want to watch these films more, and I'm just like. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. By the way, I got another movie for you. It's called The Id. Oh, I'll write it down. I haven't heard of that one. The Id. That's with oh, what is oh my god. 
Amanda Wiss. Trevor. Okay. I'm on Elm Street. She, she ID. <laughs> which I got to find the video. I'll send it to you if I can't find it in time later on. But I met her at a con. I actually met her at a con twice. And one was out here in Albany. <clears throat> Me and my wife went to this con. And she was telling us. She was like, yeah, this movie coming out called The Id. Blah, 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 blah. Talking about it. And I was like, awesome, awesome. And she did, she ended up doing a, uh, what did she say? Like a welcome to Horror Research 30 with me on camera for it. Because I just, again, just asking. And then she was like, all right. After she did that, she said, like, can you do me a favor and tell people to watch this movie? I was like, of course. Of course. And just, oh, man, it's. That's great. That's it's, awesome. It, it feels so good because you're getting to see these people and talk to these people that you literally meet. Like I said, I started watching horror when I was five. So you get to, I get to see these people that. I've been a fan of not knowing I'm a fan of these people. Cause you just see, I mean, as a kid, you don't even know. I'm just watching the movie. I'm just, I'm not even thinking of who the actors and actresses are and all that other stuff. And then once you get older, I'm like, Oh my God, you see, Oh wow. Wow. These cons, these, this is they're in. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then talk to them and all this stuff. Another really nice person, Felissa Rose. So freaking nice. It's that's great. Oh man. I, I, <laughs> I can't wait to get to another con that you guys can see like this. This is just, it's great. It's so fun. And I will make it out to one of those cons in California. <clears throat> I'm going to make it out to one of those cons in California. Don't know when. Yeah. It's going to be a couple of years probably, but I'm going, I have to, I have to. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're pretty, pretty cool. Pretty crazy for sure. I mean, I'm sure the ones in New York are great too, you know, but yeah, just getting out there and being surrounded by people who all kind of love the exact same thing. It's you, you feel like you're coming home, you know? It's pretty I, cool. I, I think that's the best part of it, too, because that <clears throat> what I've realized with the horror convention, I mean, I've been to, like, small Comic Cons and all that, or, like, those conventions where it's just, like, a little bit of everything. I can say more so for the horror conventions, because I go to those more, and I'm more into that, because even when I go to those other ones, yes, I'll go for, like, the Ninja Turtle stuff and a few other things, but I'm looking for horror first. <laughs> Any type of con I go to, I'm looking for horror first. Like, Aaron, this is this is a children's con, Christmas con. Oh, <laughs> so you have no bloody Santa, anything? I'm leaving. <laughs> right, exactly. I, I look for horror first and then go on to the other stuff. But when I get into these conventions, <clears throat> I feel like all the, I'm not saying with everybody 100%, but it, see, it seems like literally everybody, all the nonsense is left at like outside those doors. As soon as you go in there, everybody's having a great time talking film, talking have you seen this? Have you seen that? And the most fun conversations I feel is when, which now I can use this movie and I can use society and all those other ones is when you bring up movies like that, or even like a thanks killing or something small that nobody's heard about like those silly ones. And then you're talking about with other fans of it and you're like, Oh, okay. So it's not just me that loves this movie. It's you guys as well. Yeah, Actually, that's I, made awesome. a good, I made a good friend off of that movie. Just talking about that movie in, in line at a con here in Albany. And Again, I I can't wait. I just can't wait for them. They need to come back. They need to hurry up. Because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, that's great, man. That's so cool. That's awesome. Anything else you want to tell the people, John, before we wrap this one up? Uh, I think that's about it. I mean, you guys are welcome to check out my Instagram, you know, or website. I've got artwork that I'm always putting up. And if I do have any inklings about the film i will post it on my instagram you know so please feel free to to uh follow and reach out if you want to and if you have any comments on the podcast i'm be glad to respond and you know keep keep uh, making those contacts you know be great exactly see that he, he's talking about networking people that's what he's talking about <laughs> he's talking about and he has listen he's he's underselling himself he does a lot of dope stuff he does a lot of dope stuff Links in the description for everything we talked about tonight. That's one. Two, I've told you guys plenty of times. He's the one who made this. <laughs> little guy. Yes, this right here. This is this is Search 30. And then this little thing around its neck, my nephew made that for me. So I'm like, we'll just put it, give him a necklace now. now he has yeah, a black. that's cool. Well, thanks, man. Thanks for showing that. That's awesome. <clears throat> but guys, again. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your enemies, tell everybody. <clears throat> Have a great night, people. I'll see you in your nightmares. Peace. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.